Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Lisa O'Sullivan from Kilrushen District Historical Society. We're in West Clare, and um, just a little, maybe, brief history on our society. We're a young society. We're only there since 2012. And um, really, the, the, the uh, beginning of the society was when there's a lovely historic graveyard in Kilrush with over 927 individual marked um, burials in it, which is enormous. And uh, a local genealogist, uh, our current PRO, was trying to find graves. And you, he could find nothing. The, the grass was waist high. So on the way out of the graveyard, um, a small group said, oh, something must be done. This is no good. So they started the society that year in 2012. And the following year then decided to apply um, to host the National Famine Commemoration, which they were successful with help from Clare County Council. So that was an enormous undertaking for our, uh, one of our first um, events, but it was very successful. And President Michael Higgins came and um, unveiled a memorial, which is in the town now. And uh, we hold our, our lectures in the, the lovely building with the moonlight behind it there. It's the Chuck Keole, it's the former Church of Ireland building in Kilrush. We have a small committee of eight. I'm the chairperson. And uh, we have about 125 members with maybe 90 or so paid up in any year. And um, the events that we hold, we hold a, a monthly lecture um, on the last Tuesday of every month on a very wide variety of topics. And we find that the most popular topics are the really local ones, like <laughs> the Holy Wells of West Clare, because it went down very well, the Creameries of West Clare, that kind of... But we do some very national topics as well and have... Um, visiting speakers from the National Library of Ireland and um, uh, from the universities in Galway, Limerick, etc., uh, come and speak for us as well. We also hold, in the summer, we don't do a lecture, we prefer to get outdoors, and we do some walks and talks and some outings. You can see the, the photo here at the, the house. This one here is a local house, actually, um, Bonnie Doon in Kilrush, but we've also visited, for example, last year we went to Tarbert House in, in North Kerry, and then we went to Mount Ivers in Six Mile Bridge. So we hold outings generally in July, and then in August we have our Heritage Week event. And um, uh, last year then, uh, we, had, we had an idea, there was a factory in Kilrush from 1961 to 1983, um, Celtic Ceramics it was called, and... Um, the factory really, the memory of it in the younger generation, it just wasn't there. They had no idea that this factory had existed. And yet there were a lot of people who are now in their 60s and 70s who had worked there. And it was a very big part of their lives. Some of them went straight from school into the factory. And, um, and then when the factory closed in the Depression in the 80s, it was just absolute devastation for so many. And some people who had worked in the factory for those 22 or so years never worked again. It was really an, an awful depression when the factory closed. So we decided we wanted to commemorate that every house in Kilrush has a piece of, at least one piece of, of Celtic ceramics in it. And it was, it's just known as the factory or the, the ceramics factory in Kilrush. So we decided that needs to be celebrated. So that had been initially our idea for our um, Heritage Week project. But then when we heard the theme of Heritage Week was sharing stories, we felt that this was an excellent opportunity to get this intergenerational. To, uh, we went into the school and invited the children to help us to write a questionnaire that a lot of their grandparents would have worked in the factory and to invite them then to write what questions would you ask your grandparents about working in this factory at that time and none of the kids had heard of the factory so they came up with fabulous questions they were really great when you get them going for <laughs> and they're off and it said were the women paid the same as the men or were the people who made the the pottery paid the same as the people who sold it and they really had lots and how do you do this and who did that and was there a uniform how much were you paid they had really they were really engaged with it and they asked terrific questions so um, then also obviously last year was the 2018 European Year of Culture so uh, there was a very strong European link to the factory because um, protectionism in Ireland finished and something like the IDA or the start of the IDA had been set up and now your um, foreign companies could invest for the first time since the formation of the state foreign investment was allowed because they could see we needed something to, to give a boost to the economy. 
So one of the first factories that came to Ireland was uh, the Jubelacker um, factory from Germany came to Kilrush. Now, I still haven't gotten to the bottom of why Kilrush and why Jubelacker, but hopefully we'll, um, with a bit of research, maybe get into some IDA papers. We might be able to get some more information on that. But 100 young men, school leavers from Kilrush, and which is a huge part of them, the population of Kilrush is about 2,700. So this large swathe of young men sent off to Germany for one year. So they lived and worked there in this Jubelacker factory. And then when they were trained up, they came home and they taught their contemporaries. And when it was in its heyday, the factory um, employed about 150 people. So a couple of years later, Jubelacker no longer owned it and they sold it to Rosenthal, who are still in operation. And you'll see a lot of beautiful uh, Rosenthal ceramics and glass is still out there. And um, if you pop on eBay and put in Rosenthal, you'll get loads of Kilrush ceramics because it's so like it in form. It's very uh, good looking, clean lines to the, um, to the pottery. And you can see, I think my next slide has some nice, um, this is the next one. Yeah, you can see some of the lovely pottery there, some of the very sleek shapes. This is some of the very early pottery. In later times, it got a bit utilitarian and it ended up being uh, uh, plates and, um, you know, uh, tableware. But, uh, but in the early days, it was, it was very decorative and some very, very good looking stuff. So at that stage, we had our theme. We had our little info with the kids and we said, OK, how are we going to execute this? So we chose our date in um, in uh, August last year, and we had our venue is our usual venue. You can see the stained glass windows there. That's uh, St. Senan's former Church of Ireland building, which is now Chuck Keol, owned by Coltus Keoltorian, and we rent it from them for our monthly uh, lectures. So we had to decide on a format next. So we decided we'd do an exhibition, and our, our uh, secretary is a lecturer in Mary I. So he borrowed these lovely glass cases for some of the older, precious pieces. And we set the rest out on the stage, and we put up photos. We got a list of all the uh, former workers that we could access and um, any other memorabilia that we had. And we put out the word, social media, and the parish newsletter, the usual, to get the people who used to work there to invite them all, to invite them to bring their pieces or anything unusual that they had. There were a lot of commemorative pieces that would have been for confirmations and uh, jubilees and whatever. So to bring as much as they had. And then the other important thing was to say who will do what um, on the day. So we welcomed people. We had a, a list so that everyone who attended could sign in. So we'd have a little record of that. And if they were had worked in the factor, factory to indicate that to us, so we could have an idea of who was still around, who had worked there. And they brought all sorts. One lady brought a little diary when Rosenthal owned the factory. Um, they used to give them a beautiful little diary illustrated with photos of their latest range of ceramics. And uh, she brought it in her diary from 1971. And I was looking at it and I said, oh, what's this? it's all in shorthand. She said, my mother was very nosy. She said, I always wrote my diary in shorthand. So her mother wouldn't be reading her private thoughts. But uh, she still had this from 1971. That was the year I was born. So she really had um, yeah, hung on to these things. It meant an awful lot to the, to the people. So we put out the word anyway, and we had our date. And um, one of our big problems, and <coughs> foolishly, our date clashed. We're not the sporting committee. Clashed with the All-Ireland Hurling final in an All-Ireland Hurling county. Well, we didn't make it to the All-Ireland, but we're definitely a hurling county. So we didn't know what to do. Our event was supposed to be from 2. This is something to think of, 2 to 5 p.m. And we said, that's just not going to work. No one's going to turn up. So at the last minute, and with the help of social media, we moved it to from 5 to 8 p.m. And we thought we'd have enough... We thought we'd have a reasonable crowd of people and we thought this would be all very well. But we, in fact, ended up with over 200 people came in the door from start to finish. Our original intention had been to get the children to interview the grandparents there and we'd record the, 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 the hum in the room was so loud. You couldn't, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't do any um, interviewing at all. So that's a project for, for a future date. And I just a tip is to the contingency plans is the Irish weather. Um, we used to I used to be on the committee of Age to Mrs. Crotty, a traditional music festival in Kilrush, and we had five outdoor Cayleys in August in West Clare. And every year out of big stress, no matter what, it was always the weather. And we had to set a deadline, and it's a good rule of thumb, have a time 
if your outdoor event can be brought indoors well and good, but have a time at which you say, this is it. It's either going ahead or it's not, because you'd have you know, sound equipment and everything. So contingency plans are just so important. And really, we didn't have one for our larger than anticipated crowd. So we ended up having to, we're shelving that part of our project, but we will move on with it. So those, um, any tips, small tips that I have are to plan ahead, but you've heard so much from people better qualified than I earlier in the day. Assigning roles is very important. We had uh, two of our group assigned to take photographs of all the pieces the people brought and to write down who bought them, who brought them, um, and where they got them. So we have a lovely photographic archive now of the, the Kilrush held pieces of ceramics and um, to just roll with the bunches. You know what, we couldn't do the interviews on the day, we got over it. You know, you have to just adapt to your day. And what somebody had said earlier in the day, a debrief is really, really important. We sat down afterwards over Little Bevy and uh, we had a chat about the whole thing and see how did it go, what should we change, well, you know, what should we do, maybe change our times, change, you know, that kind of stuff. Make a note of all those things. And... Um, then for the future of, sorry, what did I do there? For the future of our, I've done something strange, I can do that, can't I? Yes, um, of our project and um, our society, the future for the project is that we will, we will go on to conduct those interviews. We'll get the children to interview their grandparents and we'll have a lovely oral history project, go into the school and get that done. Guard of Etting and GDPR aside, <laughs> sometimes it's very hard. You can't, um, you know, recording names and then you're, you've got permission all over the place, but anyway, we get over that. And the future for our society is great. We've, um, we're in the middle of seeking funding for a World War I memorial because there were 97 young men from Kilrush died in the First World War. And for a population of about two and a half thousand at the time, it was a huge blow to a small town. And uh, so we're putting a memorial up, please God. And we have this a lovely book with a list of names there. And that's the plan of the memorial. The plans are there. The planning permission is there. So it's moving on to money now. And uh, also we have um, the Kilrush was a planned landlord town. And uh, the Vandalers were the name of it. They were a Dutch family who planned the town. And um, part of the estate, the, the house itself is gone. But part of the estate, there was a lovely turret a lodge, a lodge building and it's fallen into disrepair. It was inhabited up to the mid 80s. So Clare County Council asked us to help them to write an application for uh, the Heritage, Heritage Towns Initiative or Historic Towns Initiative funding. And we got that, we're delighted, we got 190,000 euro to restore that building. So the Historical Society, the aim is that we're going to turn that into a heritage and genealogy center. So that's our next big thing. And that has to be done by November 11th. So it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, shoulder to the wheel time. So but thankfully the Clare County Council have taken over. They, they've, um, they led the application. So they're the ones with the nightmare of timing and tenders and match funding because we couldn't, we couldn't cope with that. We're, we're too small. But we will hopefully, we will be the people who will be in that building and sharing the lovely rich history of Kilrush. And next year, or, the, or rather this year, the Heritage Week, we, we're... Um, our past times, past times project is um, hopefully we're going to go to the sports um, societies in the town, like the, the golf club was in Kilrush since 1928 and the GAA club. And what was there prior to that was a cricket club. And if you play football in Kilrush, you play it at the cricket field because it was it was a cricket field prior to that. So um, there's a lot of, there's a rich history there. So we're hoping to liaise with those societies and get them all to find some memorabilia and to maybe get some of the kids in the strip and out to, to uh, share the heritage. So that's our plan for the future. So um, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.